G'day folks, Tim, Sue and Monty here from an Aussie road trip and we're in the beautiful Delina Gorge which is about 40k northwest of Marble Bar in WA and there is absolutely nobody here. So this is actually our second lap uh, around Australia. The first one we did was, uh, what, in 2020? Um, and uh, that was just as COVID uh, took control. And, well, we didn't quite see everything that we wanted to see. We still had a few things on the bucket list. So we decided when we got back to Perth, we would sell the house and we would go on another lap. So here we are. Um, we're, a f well, we're now, what, a few weeks into it. Um, we thought we'd give you a quick look around the van, show you some of the stuff that we like, um, some of the stuff that we don't like so much if we did it again and I'll also sh uh, show around the truck as well. We've got a Fraser Retreat or a Retreat Fraser 226R van. Uh, we've had it for four years now. Um, it, obviously it went on the first lap with us. Um, we bought this obviously four years ago and we haven't really done too much to it um, and we haven't really had many problems with it um, so uh, so that's good given some of the places that we've taken it to we love going to remote spots like this down long dusty bumpy roads uh, we've done the Gibb River twice we've done Savannah Way um, Udnadada um, yeah all sorts of different spots like that so uh, she is a bit dusty she you know once the old red dirt gets onto it a little difficult to get off so um, oh let's Let's just go and have a look inside. <laughs> flies are buzzing. The flies are buzzing. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our van. It's uh, a rear club lounge. Um, we specifically wanted when we bought this. We specifically wanted uh, the club lounge. Um, obviously, not travelling with kids, we don't have to worry about about the bunkies. Uh, so that's uh, you know made a nice bit of extra space for us there. And probably the only thing that would change is I wouldn't have cloth. Yeah. Because it just sucks in the red dirt. Yeah. So we have um, temporarily just put down like a waterproof, um, what was it, like a It's like a top? canvas. Yeah, just... Just on the bottom. Yeah. Um, because obviously now the dog sleeps up here too. Yes. Um, so we do have, obviously, the fans. Yeah, we got, uh, we've actually got Scirocco fans um, throughout the van. And the... Um, We've got a security. Yeah, we've got a security camera uh, inside the van for when we leave it. Yeah. Um, and uh, which just... works a treat. Hmm. Hmm. And also these we had made. Yeah, these are no seam um, um, meshes, and you know, quite honestly, the the mesh that comes with the vans is hopeless. It you know basically it stops a, a large fly, anything oh. less than a large fly, and it'll it'll yeah. come through. Sand flies. Yeah, sand flies. They'll all they come straight through. So we made up these. Um, it's actually a, a no -seam, um double. double mesh. Mm -hmm. So we've got really super thin mesh in the back here, which is the no -seam. And then, um, yeah, they just Velcro, Velcro onto the windows. And so when we're like super remote like this, or we've got sand flies or you know, stuff like that. We can sit inside knowing with the lights on. We're not going to get eaten. We're absolutely fine. Yeah, that's it. And they still let um, air flow through. Yeah. Um, they do darken it up a little bit, um, but uh, that's fine. It's fine. fine. Yeah. This is a little treasure as well. Ah, this thing. Be without it. Um, at night, when you're remote, obviously you don't want to be using power, so this works a treat. Yeah, and a lovely little um, bit of candlelight, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a little bit of a flick going on. Yeah, we actually had the. Well, we do have somewhere. The wax I've got them. electric candles. Yeah, but they melt. They melt. Yeah. Who'd have thought? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, soda stream wouldn't be without uh, it. Yeah. Um, use it every single day. Yeah. Obviously, a nice bottle of red is always a good, good thing to have. Um, I made the spice rack. Spice rack, because I love my spices. So hubby made a spice rack, which fits in great. Yeah. Use it all the time. Don't use, obviously we don't use We've got the, the classic Swift 500. Yeah. We, we virtually never use the cooker anyway. 
Um, we'll only tend to use it if it's like super windy outside or it's chucking it down with rain or something like that. Um, then, we, then we might have used it. But, you know, four years, we've never had a problem. But we've got to do what they've got to do, eh? So we're, all, we're always barbecuing outside. Love it. So kitchen, same old, same old. I love my defrosting plate. It defrosts um, meat like in half the time. That's this thing? Half the time. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, wouldn't be yeah. without it. So we've got some, some mince defrosting here for tonight. Uh, we've got two TVs in this van. We've got um, one TV, one TV came uh, obviously in the lounge area. Um, we've got some, we've got a satellite dish as well. Um, all of the, all of the electric, well, all of the media stuff is up in here. Satellite dish and we've got probably, a media center. Probably wouldn't do a satellite dish again. No, nah, no. Nah. Like if we got another van, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't because bother. I've got everything that I need. We've got a fire stick. A fire stick, I love it. It yeah. does everything. Yeah. So in this type of van, we've got obviously a club lounge and it's separated by ensuite into the bedroom. Um, I think it's got some pros and cons to it, this kind of layout. Um, one of the biggest issues, I think, is airflow. The air con, which is up here, doesn't get really into the bedroom. So we've had to put uh, a second or another Scirocco fan uh, into here to just kind of help the airflow, push it into the bedroom. Um, so that's kind of an issue. The other, I mean, one of the pros is that you can go to bed and someone you know someone can stay up watch tv doesn't really bug us um, so that's okay got a full washing machine front loader that's really good does a 10 minute cycle we can actually do the washing out here doesn't use a lot of water uh, which is great so um, i'll talk about our uh, power um, in a minute um, but uh, yeah so it's a full load washing machine um and then into the bedroom where all the action happens. Yeah, so we've got a diesel heater under the bed. Um, that was something that we, we put in afterwards, which, you know, quite frankly, has been, oh, it's been brilliant yeah. on those really cold mornings. Yeah. You just kind of turn over and chuck on the diesel heater. It's brilliant. Yeah. And it's, I have to say, it's one of those cheap Chinese ones and it hasn't let us down. Super fast, like yeah, heat up really just heats up really good. Love my vacuum, wouldn't be without it. Makita. Oh yes. No, yeah, we got a lot. Makita. 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 We got a lot of Makita um, kind of tools. Because of this little fur baby, I use it maybe twice, three times a day. Mm. Um, just the hair. Yep. This is another thing I wouldn't be without. Oh. It's the best one we found. Yes. It's, it's like instant death to flies, which is uh, really good. We've lost the awning once. Uh, we were in a thunderstorm in Julia Creek and it kind of relocated itself to the other side of the van. Um, so this is actually our second awning on this van. Um, oh, here's an interesting thing. <laughs> this is something we're uh, trying out at this point. Um, ants. We've had a couple of ant infestations um, and they're not pretty. So uh, we're trying to, you know, we're putting down lots of ant powder, but you know, that gets expensive and you can't always find it. You don't always, you know, able to get to the shops, you might run out. Trays full of water. Well, ants don't really seem to swim. I know they can swim, they can float across, but they don't seem to cross over the water. So that seems to be working for us at the moment. Uh, well, around the back here, we can see it's, uh, well, pretty, Pretty dusty still. Uh, this has been uh, pretty good. We put our uh, mat uh, when we travel, you know, as wet or as muddy as it can be, we put it into here, um, into the bag. And then at the moment in here, we've got garbage. So uh, we'll just, we'll uh, change that around uh, when we travel. We do have a ladder up and underneath. One of the collapsible uh, ladders um, is on a bracket under there and then it's just strapped in. Our van carries, well, we've got uh, two 90 litre water tanks uh, and obviously the grey water tank as well. Um, 
that's something that I would do differently next time uh, around as well. Um, I would put in a separate 45 litre water tank um, for drinking water uh, and have it on a separate, um, a kind of a separate water circuit. Um, obviously all of our water uh, is all now drinking water. Uh, and we've had a couple of instances where we've, well in fact we had one yesterday where, where the water just, um, it was odd. So we just had to uh, drain all our water out. Uh, we were in Port Hedland. We dumped all the water, which is a shame. Um, and then, um, yeah, restock all the water, reload everything. Uh, whereas if it was just, you know, you're drinking water, uh, it's only 45 litres, it's a lot easier to kind of keep keep, uh, keep safe. Uh, and then you don't worry about your kind of your shower water and stuff like that. But anyway, that happened. Um, Another good thing here, uh, we've got these security lights. These are motion detection lights. Um, they'll come on, obviously, when cows walk by too, which is quite funny. They were doing that this morning. Um, we added a couple of these extra boxes um, uh, to us, uh, to our rig. Um, they're just un underslung boxes. Um, spares, that would be a fairly big piece of advice to anyone that's uh, just kind of starting out uh, on on this. Get some spares, um, wheel bearings. We I carry a set of wheel bearings, a separate hub, uh, so it's a freewheeling hub, um, and I've got two shock absorbers uh, in there. There, they seem to be the things that are most likely to go, um, and the most you know some of the easiest things you can actually change yourself. Um, Oh, the other thing um, is jacking the van up. Um, you know, if you do have a flat tire, or you, you know, you've got to change your wheel bearings or whatever, the jacks that come with the van, these things, the trailer jacks, I've got to say, they're pretty useless at jacking up the van. We've got jack plates on the side of the van, um, just here. Uh, this is a, a jacking plate uh, for that thing, but nope. Um, it won't lift the van. The easiest way to lift the wheel off um, off the ground uh, is just to get underneath uh, with a simple bottle jack. We've got a, a 4,000 kilo bottle jack in the back of the back of the car, and just lift that one wheel off. Uh, and then it'll uh, you, know, you can change all the bolts. You can do what you need to do to change your tires. Um, even do you know your wheel bearings like that uh, as well. So. Stuff we got up the front here, well obviously all of the gas, we've got you know, another ladder here that we need. God, look at those bugs coming out of there, that's lovely isn't it? Um, we do have the stone stomper, that has been pretty good actually, we've had that since new. Um, we put, well when we got back from our first lap around, we had so many dents and scratches on this front panel that uh, it just looked really bad. And uh, you know, half the stickers were, were coming off. It was through stones. It wasn't through the vehicle chucking up the stones as we were driving. It's actually by trucks and stuff coming past you. So I Raptor coated it. I've got to tell you, this stuff is amazing. I started off, like most things, started off with, hit, with just this front panel. Raptor coated that, and then I got a bit carried away, and I started to Raptor coat other things. I've Raptor coated the chassis as well, and I don't know if you can see that, but down on here, this is all now Raptor coated, and it's all the way, all the way back, back under, right the way through the wheels, um, and underneath all of there. So that's all been Raptor coated now, um, and I've got to tell you that thing, that stuff is uh, it's pretty hardy. We haven't got, well, we've got nothing like the stone chips that we had before. Um, and it's easy to maintain as well. You can, you know, worst case, you can chuck another coating on it. Okay, so um, we run Enerdrive Lithium. Uh, we've got 200 amp hour battery um, under the uh, rear seats here. Um, we also run uh, a Red Arc battery management system. We've got well, we started off with, what, about th uh, about 300 watts of solar 
uh, on the roof. And halfway round the last lap, we were really struggling. We'd pull up in places like this and it just wasn't kind of keeping up. Wasn't able to keep up, wasn't charging the batteries. So we added two more EnerDrive um, solar panels to the roof. That's about as much as we could fit up there. So we've now got 660 watts of solar up top. Um, and you know, on a decent day, um, that generates a, uh, you know, a decent amount of uh, decent amount of power. Right now, it's generating 23 amps, um, recharging the batteries. Uh, so that's good. Uh, so they'll they'll charge up. They'll charge back up to 100% today, uh, no problem. Um, internet phones. We often get asked about. Uh, what do we what do we use? Um, really don't like being without either internet uh, or phone service. But you know the places that we love traveling to, we we often end up with with no service, uh, like here, for example. So we have a cell fire system. Uh, we've actually got two cell fires. Um, we've got one in the car and one in the van. Um, a cell fire system um, and. For the most part, that kind of keeps us going. Um, we've got a little tiny magnetic uh, antenna um, out the back that sits onto the uh, um, sits onto the rear bar. Um, sometimes, obviously, that that's not kind of big enough. So we've got a uh, there's a five meter pole uh, that we'll put up with a uh, a different antenna on the top. Um, and generally, if there is you know if there's one bar of service, then that thing will boost it. Uh, and we end up with, you know, fairly good either 3G or pretty decent 4G. Um, sometimes, though, that doesn't work from the internet standpoint. Um, we run um, a Netgear uh, Nighthawk M2 uh, router, which is plugged in over there in the corner, um, and that is our that's our kind of our Wi-Fi uh, for the whole van, and that does both the inside and you know we can connect to it outside as well. However, sometimes obviously there is no signal like now. Um, and so we've got a, what's called a MIMO antenna as well that we'll put up on the pole. Um, and we've got cables that run through the van um, or through the, through the floor of the van. And uh, that thing goes up five meters and you point that at the kind of the closest um, tower. Um, and you can generally boost your internet um, through that. So it's a data boost rather than a voice boost. We've got a 2000 watt inverter uh, under here as well. Um, now, when we bought the van, um, we didn't connect the inverter to all of the points. I know you can do that, um, but we didn't. Um, so it, it's just kind of a separate uh, thing that we can plug into. Uh, in hindsight, I probably would. In hindsight, actually on the battery front, uh, I would get more battery, uh, I would plug um, I'd probably keep the same sort of size inverter. I know a lot of people think about, you know, turning your aircon on at places like this and running it off your inverter, but, you know, that's it's going to drain your battery real quick. So, uh, I don't know. It's probably easier just to run a Jenny if you really need to, just to cool it down. We've done that. We've got a little Honda generator um, that we'll use uh, every now and again uh, just to keep things uh, charged, particularly on kind of dark, you know, rainy days where you're not going to get a lot of solar. Um, right, so let's go and have a look at the car. Okay, so um, we pulled this uh, this heavy old girl with a uh, Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. Uh, she's a 2014 model, um, the GXL, and uh, we've had the Lovells um, upgrade, the Lovells uh, two-stage GVM upgrade. So, um, well, you know, we've got all the all of kind of the normal things um, that you'd have on here. Uh, obviously fridge freezer. Um, these are really good. Uh, these are the uh, ARB um, cargo boxes. Uh, I just keep all sorts of stuff uh, in these. Um, here's the jack that I was talking about. It's just a 4,000 uh, kilo little jack. Yeah, it lifts the van, uh, no problem at all. Um, got some uh, got a bit of a mishmash of solar actually. Um, got one up there on the on the roof as well. Um, 
in the car, uh, well, we've got the HEMA uh, HX2 Explorer. Um, had the HX1. Uh, don't know if I'm a big fan of the two or not. Still jury's out a little bit on that. Um, got the obligatory uh, UHF uh, radios. Actually, we've got, we've got two in here because um, I'm a, an oversized vehicle pilot as well sometimes. Um, so I need two radios. Uh, but seriously, if you've got a radio, use it. If you're on a caravan and you turn your van and you've got one, and even if you haven't got one, go get one. They are far safer to tow a van with a UHF radio where you can talk to the trucks uh, and everything like that. Um, we've got water bladders. Um, so we've got, we normally keep this one full. This is a 110 litre bladder. Um, I've got two 40 litre bladders as well. So we've got one in here, there's another one in the van. Um, at the moment they're just full, just because we're doing so much kind of remote off-grid stuff. Um, so, uh, we, you know, we'll, we'll just travel with this water uh, and pump it into the van uh, when we need it. There's a little pump that we've got on the side of the van and uh, we'll just transfer water from, from here to there. It's pretty handy. Uh, in terms of power for the car, uh, yeah, again, it's an inner drive system, uh, DC DC charger, AC DC charger, another self I here in the middle. There's an inverter um, under here as well, and then a 125 amp hour lithium battery in the back as well. Uh, I like the lithium because it, it charges so much faster uh, than an AGM battery, um, weighs a fraction um, of, of an AGM. Uh, and it discharges a lot, a lot lower as well, so uh, it'll run for a lot longer. So uh, all in all, I know it's a lot more expensive, but uh, all in all, um, seems to be far more worth it. Okay, a couple of other bits and pieces that uh, we really love. Um, these chairs, these are director chairs. These are actually ARB um, Old Man Emu chairs. Um, they're about a hundred bucks. Um, they pack up super small and they just uh, go straight into the back of the truck uh, which is really handy and they're really comfortable to sit in um, now traveling obviously into remote places um, there's a few other bits and pieces that uh, we carry um, first of all snake bite kit this thing well i got bitten by a snake uh, on the last trip and uh, the bandages in here were um, absolutely Brilliant. Um, we've also got uh, a defib. Um, we've used it once. We came across um, a, an accident a few years ago uh, that prompted us to get one because uh, people were significantly injured on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that kind of prompted us to, to buy one. I know they're not cheap, but um, you know, they're worth it. Um, you, know, you always want to know what you're going to do. So St. John's Ambulance course um, is you know, very important, obviously. Um, anyway, we ended up using it uh, on our last trip um, and uh, uh, the lady survived. Um, and of course, a satellite phone. These things, they're not expensive um, and they're not expensive to run. But in places like this, where you've got absolutely zero reception, having a satellite phone um, is absolutely ideal. Um, yeah, we run a drone as well. We've got DJI uh, Mavic Air 2, I think it is. Um, we lost our last one. Those of you that uh, follow our blog um, and our uh, Instagram and Facebook, um, you can see the footage of us flying it into a tree in uh, Victoria and um, not seeing it again in one piece. Uh, this table as well, this is a really handy little little table just again folds up into nothing there's so much kind of camping equipment out there now that is super light and easy to pack up um, you know it's that type of stuff that that we really got to uh, kind of look for and of course you know Monty's stuff as well um, he's got his bed there um, that's from uh, Outdoor Connection I think it's Outdoor Connection um, and he, well he just loves that it keeps him off the ground as well um, and there's a little blanket that goes over the top of it when it gets a bit cool. So that's pretty much us. 
um, yeah, we're just gonna continue our trip. We're uh, actually doing it slightly differently than we did it last time. Um, we've decided that we're not, well, we're gonna spend less time in caravan parks. We're gonna do far more remote free camping um, because that's the type of camping that we love doing. Um, and we're not gonna have a plan. Uh, our plan is actually to have no plan. Um, so if we like a place, we'll stay there a bit longer. If we don't like a place, we'll move on. So we're here, we're gonna be a couple of days here, and then we're gonna move on to another spot, uh, probably about 40K from here, and uh, go and check that out as well. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the look around our van and our truck and some of the stuff that we've, we've got and that we live with every day. Um, and uh, yeah, if, you, if you're starting this, just get into it. <laughs>